Hi everyone, Stephanie here. I have just loved the enthusiasm and excitement of all of you educators who are learning about the science of reading and are so enthusiastic about implementing it right away, full force in your classroom. But I recognize that some of you don't have the opportunity or the authority to um, make changes in your curriculum and instruction right away. So in this series of videos, uh, with this being the first one, I'm going to share some ideas about how you can take sort of small but very meaningful steps towards implementing research-based instruction in your classroom, no matter what curriculum you're using without buying a program before you engage in any lengthy professional development. So a couple of things that you can start with right away that will be really powerful um, improvements to perhaps some things that you're already doing in the classroom. So in this video, I'm going to share some ideas about how to enhance the read aloud that you might already be doing with your students. Um, so most of this planning happens before you start reading the book, right? So selecting what you're going to read is really important. And here's where you can really build on and make connections with your students as individuals, as people, uh, where you can connect to their culture, to their language, to their family environment, to their interests, to the things that they uh, want to learn about. And um, selecting the book is a really important first step. So depending on the grade level that you're working with, you might be reading the entire book to them. You might be reading a section of the book or a chapter. You want to find a, a, a selection to read that's about 250 words is the idea. And before you read the book, you want to plan for intentionally teaching the background knowledge that will be essential for students to understand that selection. You also want to choose three to five vocabulary words that are essential for understanding that selection. So carefully selecting the vocabulary that you'll pre-teach. And you can use an intentional um, routine for teaching that vocabulary. And here I'm drawing on the work of Isabel Beck. Um, her book, Bringing Words to Life, is right over my shoulder here. Um, and the strategy involves saying the word to the students, having them each say the word, writing the word so that the students can see the orthography of the word, if, if it's appropriate and you can do it, um, having the students write the word will help cement the meaning of the word also. Um, exploring the orthographic features of the word. So talking about the base word, perhaps, talking about the affixes, talking about any phonics patterns that you see there, talking about the part of speech, the different parts of speech of the word, and so on. Giving the students a student-friendly definition in terminology that they can own and then use again in the future. Talking about the word in multiple contexts. So this would be putting the word to use in a variety of different uh, contexts. That's gonna broaden the student's understanding and connection to the word. Uh, having the students use the word and then perhaps posting that word in your classroom. Then you're going to actually read the, the story or read the selection, the, the portion of the story that you've selected. And in doing that, you're modeling fluent reading. So read it all the way, all the way through. Then you're going to guide your students in a discussion of that selection or that book. And that can take a variety of different forms. That might be structuring up uh, students to be able to give a retell. It might be going deep into particular sentences where inferences are required or the syntax is very complex and you have to tease out the meaning of what's happening, help students to create that mental model of what's going on in that selection. Um, or it might be just a simple uh, sort of question and answer type of, of discussion that you're having. Then you're going to read that selection again. And before you reread it, you're going to review the vocabulary and you wanna engage students in doing that. So you want to have them 
say the vocabulary word and that student-friendly definition to their partner, and they each can say it. They might have a slightly different definition, that's fine. That will engage the entire class in this opportunity. Then you're going to engage the students in doing a retell of what they have heard. So they can do that again with partners, um, where each one of them has a turn in their partnership to retell that passage. As students are retelling, you want to circulate through the room. And here's an opportunity to, uh, to validate what students are saying in their retell, to extend their verbal um, statements, to provide support, uh, maybe a scaffold with a sentence stem or a fill in the blank if students are really struggling. Um, so you're, you're providing that support to the class while they're working in partners to do that retell. Then it would be important to uh, continue to use the words that were in that selection or story throughout the week and over time. That's the value of really selecting those tier two words because they are the words that you want students to use again in their writing, in their oral conversation. They're gonna see them frequently in print. Uh, that's the value of selecting those words very carefully to teach. So if you want to go a little bit deeper into this, some resources that I would encourage you to check out would be uh, Juicy Sentences. This is a, a great uh, title for an approach from Lily Wong Fillmore at Stanford. You could look into the um, Isabel Beck questioning the author. Make sure you get her newest publication of that book, 15 Years Smarter. You could look into the work at Ohio State University of Laura Justice and her team. I believe their project is called LARC. Um, so you don't need to have a program. You don't need to, to make a wide scale change to your curriculum. This is something that you can integrate into a part of your reading block that you are probably already doing. Just some tweaks to make it a little bit more effective for your students. So I hope that's helpful for you and we'll extend on this with the next video.